Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Here is our uh, EJ22 engine uh, that we're going to install on the bus. Um, we're just going to prep it for putting in the bus. Um, so what I've done is I've actually taken off the throttle body. It uh, sits like that. Um, it interferes with the firewall, so we need to take that off before we slide it into the engine bay. I'm also going to uh, replace the uh, rear main seal. Got that right here. Um, recommend genuine Subaru uh, seals. That's just what's been uh, recommended to me. Um, I've had good luck with them. Uh, we can take a look here. I'm just gonna um, actually pop this seal out and replace it with the Subaru one. Um, you can use a uh, end cap from uh, plumbing um, aisle of Home Depot and uh, just tap it in, making sure to oil it really well. Um, other than that, uh, now is a good time to do any seals, head gaskets, or the crank seal, or the crank seal here, the oil pump seal, um, the cam seals, one on each side on the front. Um, basically doing any maintenance when it's out and easy to work with. So uh, I'm going to actually um, continue cleaning it up just a touch. Um, the, the timing belt was done on this engine already, like within 5,000 miles. So I inspected it. It looked great. All new roller bearings. The idler bearings are all good. So I'm just leaving it. And at that time, they replaced the uh, the seals as well. So it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to leave that stuff. And um, just some other things. I'm going to install a um, oil pressure uh, sender. Kind of tucked underneath here. This is where the stock oil switch, oil pressure switch is on the Subaru. But I'm going to um, replace that with a sending unit that will go to a... a gauge up on the dash that'll tell me the actual pressure versus just an idiot light so there she is getting ready to install just to detail what I've done uh, on the back side of the engine here um, did the um, rear main seal uh, one way I like doing it is uh, just slightly tapping in just a like a drywall screw and then using a hammer to kind of pull and pry that out. Now one caution would be that you don't want to mar the surface that rotates and you, you don't want to mar anything but you know air on the side of tapping it in closer to the uh, block side. Okay the other things that I've done are um, uh, in preparation for moving the throttle body is moving the coolant line um, so this is the original on this side and I added a longer extension so that we can connect up and cut to length and then on the the other side the right hand side it goes from the uh, IAC valve and just added an extension on that as well um, and then another thing, uh, just because I don't like working on my back, is I added just a little um, bypass for the heater um, line. Now what this is going to do is allow us to install the engine, get it up and running, and then uh, you're able to undo these hose clamps and uh, install your heater lines uh, once it's all tested and once you've found a good place for your heater. Okay, I've uh, done spark plugs and kind of just any other odds and ends on it and uh, we're actually ready to um, finish up a couple things uh, to the chassis which I'll document and then um, I'm also going to show you how to mount the adapter, the uh, new flywheel, the new clutch and pressure plate and then we'll uh, get everything installed. So here's the kit content of the um, KEP adapter kit and it includes the studs and the adapter plate and the uh, flywheel um, 
to adapt to um, from Subaru to the VW and um, we've also got the uh, the bolts that'll go into the um, the crank shaft okay and then I've got a new clutch and a new pressure plate that I'll install the clutches usually come with a um, clutch alignment tool um, so make sure you get that with your clutch and then once it's all mated to the transmission there's a uh, dust cover that uh, comes with the adapter kit so I ran into a bit of a problem um, I should have noticed this before I uh, installed the flywheel but it's actually for the 200 millimeter clutch not the 228 um, so this new clutch that I have is actually too big so I called uh, and I'm going to be getting a replacement very shortly just a bit of an odor oversight on my end um, I've ordered tons of these and this is actually the first time that this has happened so um, it's gonna be delay me a couple days but um, you know it's good to good to learn uh, from my mistakes I finally got the right flywheel and uh, I'm gonna get this installed Next up is taking the clutch and the clutch alignment tool and getting it centered onto the flywheel. And then installing the pressure plate. When I was going to install the clutch, um, I saw that the flywheel didn't have its locating dowels, its locating pins, so I actually took these pins off of the Subaru uh, flywheel. Um, you can also take them off of your VW flywheel, um, so uh, make sure you, you snag these. This is a out front motorsports flywheel don't remember having to get these separately, but um, it might be the case. I've always ordered directly from KEP, KEP, and uh, some for some reason I want to say that they include them, whereas out front did not. So you want to make sure to to put those or keep those handy. Okay, then we'll take our pressure plate, get them line, get it lined up on the uh, dowels. And use the bolts from the VW pressure plate. Now you just want to be gradually tightening them in a star pattern. Now we're going to torque these fasteners down to 10 foot-pounds and I put a breaker bar on the crank bolt on the front just so the um, just so it doesn't spin. And you want to do this in a star fashion. And it looks like my uh, breaker bar is spinning just a little bit but It'll, it'll hold for 10 pounds. And 
and then you can just take the alignment tool out and now we're ready to put the blocking dust shield plate on the bottom here. Here's the dust shield. It kind of tucks between the adapter plate and the block. Um, I have it lifted up here, but um, you know you may want to wait until the engine's in the engine bay before putting this on, um, just because you know this moves and it's not the safest thing. So I'd. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put this on after it's all mounted into the bus. As a recap of the engine prep video here, um, I'm just gonna go over a few things that I did um, just to kind of summarize. Um, took off the uh, throttle body um, while we're placing the engine. I just don't want it to get banged up. Uh, plus, it just doesn't fit. <laughs> so, take that off. I'm going to put a rag in there before I start monkeying around with uh, putting the engine in the bay. I've extended these coolant lines. There's one here and one here. These are actually going to go up to the uh, the uh, throttle body once it's relocated. Um, I moved the engine plugs as well just because they'll, they'll um, mate up with the harness a little better um, off to the far right. Uh, left as we're looking at it, but the far right once it's placed. I've put a little bypass for the heater tubes so that I don't have to crawl underneath and do that later. Um, now the back side of the engine, I cleaned everything off and actually replaced the rear main seal. I put the adapter plate, the flywheel, the new clutch, and the pressure plate on. Uh, one thing to note is that the longer stud goes in this location so that it mates up with the um, with the starter. The starter needs a slightly longer stud. Okay, this engine had the timing belt and water pump, oil pump even, and all the seals replaced uh, less than 10,000 miles ago. I think it was closer to five. I'll have to look at the documentation, but um, I took off the covers and examined everything, and everything looks looks great. So I didn't really do a whole lot on that side. I did replace the valve cover seals because I noticed uh, there was a little bit of leakage there. So if we come across to the front here, um, obviously you know take took off the power steering pump as well as the air conditioning pump. Um, maybe eventually I'll put some air conditioning into this, but for now um, I'm just keeping that disconnected. Okay, if we look here, I've added a eighth inch NPT uh, short nipple, and then that goes to a T. And then if we look down in here, this is the original oil pressure sender. Now all this does is click on a warning lamp on the Subaru dash but what I've done is actually put a an electric sending unit and that's going to go to a, a gauge up on the dash of the bus. So that basically summarizes uh, the engine prep. You know it's pretty pretty much ready to go in now so the next video um, we're gonna walk through um, actually putting this into the bus so stay tuned